Bria here from Actuarial, and I'm so glad you clicked on this video because it means you passed your first actuarial exam. So congratulations! <laughs> I'm so, 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 so happy for you because this is a huge milestone in your actuarial career. Like, you've worked really hard, you've passed an exam, and now you've probably kind of proven to yourself that you can really do this. I already knew all along that you could do it, but passing that first exam, it, it really makes this all real. So before we get started, let me know down below in the comments which exam you passed and how did you find it? Was it easy or was it really difficult? Were there lots of questions you didn't know how to answer? And what study materials did you use? I'd love to know that. Um, right down below, if you have not passed your exam yet, go check out those comments because there's going to probably be lots of tips in there. There's going to be input from others that have actually passed the exam. So I'm sure it will be really, really valuable for you. Okay. Now, let's get into what you should do next. I'm sure maybe by now the excitement of passing your exam has kind of weared down a little and you're wondering what, what should you focus on? And you might be surprised that I actually don't recommend that you start studying for next, your next exam right away. Um, that's what many people do. They focus on only exams, but that is not the way to go if you want to be a top candidate for actuarial positions, okay? Before we get into those, it's important that you have a good understanding of what the three main things that actuarial employers are going to be looking for when, when they assess your resume to see if you would be a good person to interview. They're in no particular order, but number one is the exams that you've passed, okay? Usually it's going to be difficult to get an actuarial position with just one exam passed, but you're well on your way. And my cat decided to join me again. I think she did that in last week's video as well. <laughs> anyway, number one is passing exams. So you're going to need about two to three exams typically to get an actuarial job, but you have one passed now. So you're, at, you're well on your way for that. You have a good start. Second is technical skills. Actuarial employers want to know that you can use Excel confidently. Excel is so important in the actuarial world because you're going to be using it almost every single day. I'm pretty sure I used it like 99% of my days at work when I was working in an actuarial role. So it's a really, really important skill for you to know. Along with Excel, you want to know VBA or some kind of programming language. VBA is a specific programming language that allows you to automate tasks in Excel. So that's why I highly recommend using learning VBA because then you can use that, those programming skills and apply it to Excel, which you'll be using all the time. So that's two. So exams passed, technical skills. And then the third thing employers are going to look at is your experience. They want someone that has some relevant experience because that's going to just prove to them that you have the knowledge and expertise that can help you be a really good employee or actuarial candidate um, once you start working. So those three things are really important. Let's start talking about how you can start working on those three things now that you've passed an exam. And this is, is exactly why I don't recommend that you start studying for another exam because these three, these two other things, the technical skills and the re related experience are much higher priority now. So first, you're going to want to work on your technical skills. You need to learn Excel and VBA because those types of skills are going to be so valuable, not only in your actuarial career, but also when you go to start looking for relevant experience. So a lot of those types of jobs that are related to the actuarial career, and I call these stepping stone positions, they're going to require that you know how to use Excel fairly well. So that's why it's so important that you learn this next. And then once you've learned Excel, what you're going to want to do is start looking for a stepping stone position or a related, act, a related position. And these can be things like a data analyst or an underwriter, really anything where you're doing a lot of data um, entry, data entry, or something in an insurance company where you're working with a lot of different insurance products and you gain a, lot, a good understanding of how insurance works. That can be really beneficial as well. A lot of financial related jobs are really good stepping stone positions too. 
If you are in the Actuary Accelerator community already, I'm going to really quickly show you where you can go to get more information on that. So right here under resources by category, if you go to the job resources and then click on finding stepping stone positions, it's going to give you a whole video about how to find an find and identify a stepping stone position. So definitely go check that out if you are already a member of the Actuary Accelerator community. Once you get your first full-time stepping stone position, and I guess it doesn't have to be full-time, but it would be ideal if it was. Part-time would be okay. Anyway, once you find that stepping stone position and you get hired, that's when you can start looking for, or starting to study for your next actuarial exam because you're going to be able to start studying while you are also gaining experience in your stepping stone position. And by the end, you're going to come out as a really good candidate because you're going to have two to three actuarial exams passed. You're going to have technical skills, which you learned before, and then you're going to have three, or sorry, six to 12 months of relevant experience. So those three things, like I said, will make you a really good candidate. So it's definitely something that you, you want to focus on those three, two things before you start studying for your next exam. Now that we've got all that out of the way, I want to share a few other things that you should be doing while you start studying for your next exam. Okay, this is in addition to your getting your related experience. One is you want to start networking. So the bigger you can grow your network and the stronger those connections are, the more likely you are going to be to, be, to get an actuarial job opportunity later on through your network. Now, if you didn't watch last week's video, I do recommend you go watch it. But in there, I talk about how a lot of the time there are jobs available that are never actually posted online anywhere. So it, they're not even known publicly. But if you have a network of people that work in companies that you want to work for, they may be able to alert you to job opportunities that are never even posted online. So it's a really good way to uh, just open up job opportunities for yourself in the future. But that means networking, it takes time. So you have to start doing that early on in your actuarial career. Second is that you have to immerse yourself in the actuarial world. And I say this because when you start doing interviews for actuarial positions, you're going to be asked questions about actuarial terms and concepts. Almost, it's very likely that you will. So you want to be able to be able to confidently talk about those subjects. If you start immersing yourself in the, the, the actuarial world now and learning all those different terms and concepts and exposing yourself to all that actuary talk, then you're going to be so much better off later on when you start having interviews so that you just feel more confident during them. And actually, lately, I've just been hearing of many people that have not been able to move on to the next round of interviews or have been rejected after an interview because they didn't have a strong enough background in actuarial terms and concepts. So this is something that employers care about and it's something that you can start working on early so that when you do start looking for jobs, you're going to really have a, a good foundation of the actuarial field. Third is that you want to start strengthening your Excel and VBA skills. So if you are not using Excel and VBA in your stepping stone position, you want to make sure that you're still keeping those skills up to date, that you're, you're not losing any of the information that you learned earlier on when you did learn those skills. And also you want to be able to prove to employers that you really have the skills to apply what you've learned from maybe an Excel course or a VBA course, you want to prove that you can apply that to real world situations. So I want you to start finding areas in your life, maybe it's where you currently work, or maybe there is someone that has their own business or something like that, where you can start applying your skills, your technical skills to real world situations. And then you can add that onto your resume and it will really help you stand out because most people just have taken an Excel course or a VBA course. They've never actually been able to apply what they've learned to real life situations. 
but really the application is what makes you stand out because not many people do that and it, it's difficult to learn Excel and then apply it properly in real life. So those are some other things you really want to be focusing your time on right now. Okay, really quickly before the end of this video, I want to show you a few things. I'm going to share my screen with you. Right down below in the comments, I've put a link to this exact post, which is all about what to do after you pass your first actuarial exam. So it's very closely related to what I've talked about in this video. But there are some resources here that you'll definitely want to check out. So go click on it after you watch this video or pause me and go to it now. Anyway, if you scroll down, you go find this technical skills section. And right here, there's a video about for a beginner's Excel session. So you're definitely going to want to review that if you have no idea how to use Excel and need, you need to know from very beginning basics, whatever you want to call it check out that post or that video. This, this is part one of nine Excel sessions. And if you are in the Accelerator community, um, I'll switch here quickly. Under technical skills, you get access to all nine Excel videos, Excel and VBA. So they'll teach you from very beginning all the way to advanced Excel and even some VBA here. So, if you're in the community already, go check those out if you need to learn Excel still. Um, and then it moves on to relevant experience. So this is where I really want you to check out Kim's video. So Kim is an underwriter right now, which is a stepping stone position. Underwriter is a stepping stone position. So she is gaining valuable experience in her underwriting position and eventually she's going to move into an actuarial role. So this interview with Kim it really explains everything that underwriters do, how she got her job, and it's just a really detailed and helpful interview for you to watch if you think underwriting might be a stepping stone position that you might want to get into. And Accelerator members, under Actuary Answers, if you go to Interviews with the Pros, you're going to find this interview with Kim along with tons of others. So there's interviews with entry-level actuaries, and career changers and more interviews with underwriters and there's actually a fourth video coming soon uh, very soon here as well there's insurance agent there's an interview with an auditor data experts financial service reps all these are very related actuarial roles so they'll help people transition into an actuarial role later but if you want to know more about what you might be doing in any of those positions then those are really good interviews to watch Okay, and lastly, if you just go down here a little bit, it talks about how to create a really good resume. I highly recommend you check out that video if you're going to start looking for stepping stone positions. And Accelerator members, I may as well just show you that here too. Under job resources, you have a whole resume master course that you can go through to fix up your resume. Okay. That is all I have for you today in this video. If you'd like to join the Actuary Accelerator community because you're not already a member, well, we would love to have you. Basically, this program is designed to help you go from where you are right now all the way to becoming a top candidate for actuarial positions. So it shows you how to get the stepping stone jobs. It shows you how to create a really good resume. It shows you how to learn Excel and VBA, and there are whole lessons in there. There are Excel and VBA projects. It talks about a whole bunch of stuff like terms and concepts. Actually, all of September is going to be dedicated specifically to helping you learn all the actuarial terms and concepts that might come up during an interview or even in your actuarial work. So it's going to be a really important month um, and everything is going to be in the Accelerator community for that. Um, as you know, as you probably know, the job, the, the biggest hiring season of the year is at the end of the year. So October to December. So that's why in the Accelerator community right now, we're working on building LinkedIn profiles. We're, we're working on networking. We're working on emerging everyone in actuarial world, the actuarial world and concepts and all that kind of stuff. So this is the place to be if you would like to really accelerate your success in the actuarial world and open up lots of job opportunities for you in the future.
Anyway, we'd love to have you go check it out. I will leave a link to that in the comments below. That is all for today. Bye for now. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video.